can expect to pick up those materials that we'll have for you. And as well, um, Lisa Franklin has joined us, and I just want her to reiterate, you should have received an email from her about what her needs are. She's going to be working with us, gaining information about how your programs are running this summer, and so she'll need some information from you, not very much, but I'll just let her, allow her to remind you at the end, just before our question and answer session. So again, welcome, and in the interest of time, let's go ahead and dive in. So those of you that can see that are on the webinar and those that are just listening, I just want to remind us that um, I Love to Read is about helping extend summer learning. And we started the Big Read I Love to Read program back in the spring, during spring break, when we felt like our students, we wanted to encourage our students to continue their learning even in their fun time. And so we're always about creative creativity and learning process. And for this summer, we've chosen four wonderful books um, as resources to help our students learn um, creatively. And of course, it's about enhancing summer learning by engaging reading creatively in, co in our community summer camps. We actually have 12 sites so far that are committed to helping the continuing education for our students. And as you know, um, during the summer, because there's so much going on and our students are away for, an hour, uh, um, for a full month, month and a half from school, there's a significant learning loss that can occur if we do not keep them engaged. So just once again, let me commend you for your commitment, even outside of Big Thought, just to do such work of engaging our students through the summer months. And with these 12 sites alone, we're going to be able to reach over 600 students, or approximately 600 students, um, in this single reading effort. So um, thank you again, and um, we'll just uh, move forward. As you can see here, those of you that cannot see, you'll be receiving a toolkit with the program information in it. When we tell you that it's available, the toolkit will have in it, you'll have a poster that has a picture of the cover, a cover of each of the books that the students will be allowed to read for the summer um, with the authors in a background, just in case you want to discuss with them about the authors. And you're welcome to hang that somewhere, you know, visible for everyone to see. They'll be receiving I Love to Read book bags. They're really nice and we're excited about it. Um, we'll be able to provide the students. And then you'll also get a jump drive on which the jump drive will have curriculum with age appropriate lessons for each book that we know the students will be happy to enjoy. There'll be vocabulary words that you're welcome to print off. There'll be an activity book that of course you can print off as well. You can encourage the students to take that activity book home and work up with it along with their parents because at all times we always want to encourage parent engagement. And then there's also a certificate of participation, just something if you want to reward the students for being present and reading the books and doing the activities. We're excited about the curriculum and the activities that the students will have. We're excited about the bags, and we know you will be too. Um, FYI, the books and the resources that we'll be reading, we have one for lower elementary, upper elementary, and then for middle high school students. Um, we have for the early elementary school students would be Bossy Gallito for Avance. Um, Interrupting Chicken for all of our other sites will be the lower elementary. Upper elementary will be Amazing Grace. And the middle high school book is called This Is Not a Book, which is a fabulous book that I think anybody will enjoy. I've actually had the pleasure of using that with my family members, and we've just enjoyed the family time with that book. So now without further ado, I'm just going to bring on Elva Perez, and she's going to share with you um, in more detail about the scope of these resources. Yes, and just before Elva comes on, thank you, thank you, Kia. Before Elva comes on, I'm trying to see if uh, there's a representative from Avance on. Um, I'm not sure if you're on. If you could, uh, if you are, and if you can unmute your phone and acknowledge at any time that you are, we would like to see because we have a book that we know Avance is going to use. Um, and I see uh, Miss Joshua on, and I'm not sure if she's a representative. She's not a representative from Avance. Okay, so. We can continue to move on. We do not have a rep. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Elva. Good morning, everybody. Um, so glad to have you in our webinar. The first book I'd like to, to chat with you about is Interrupting Chickens by David Ezra Stein. This is an author who has been awarded several awards. He's written several books, and his story is very, very interesting. Uh, just to give you a little 
Stockdale sketch about the book, it's time for the Little Red Chicken's bedtime story and a reminder from Papa to try not to interrupt the story. But the little chicken, of course, can't help herself. Whether the tale is Hansel and Gretel or Little Red Riding Hood, she jumps right into the story to save the characters from doing something silly or dangerous. Of course, her papa is a little frustrated at chicken's interruptions, and he's frankly surprised that she isn't even sleepy. So now it's the little red chicken's turn to tell a story. But will her yawning papa make it to the end without his own kind of interrupting? Your kids will just love this book. It's fun, they'll laugh, and I just encourage you to read it with a great deal of inflection in your voice and be sure to show them the wonderful illustrations as you're going along. The next book, Amazing Grace by Mary Hoffman, is a wonderful book about children being able to do whatever they really want to do, whatever they set their minds to do. Um, the protagonist, Grace, loves everything about stories, whether they are movies, books, or whether they are related by her nana. She is so involved with the stories that she acts out all the roles. Actually, her, the most fun thing for her is to act out the most exciting roles. So when her class decides to present a play of Peter Pan, Grace knows exactly what, which part she wants. She wants the part of Peter Pan. So when her Nana takes her to the ballet and she sees the prima ballerina, Grace realizes that she can do anything she really wants to do. So with practice, confidence, and energy, she proves that she can do what she puts her mind to, and the results are really amazing indeed. The class votes overwhelmingly for Grace to be Peter Pan in the play. So I really encourage you to encourage your students to know that anything that they want to do can be accomplished with confidence and practice and a little bit of grace. The last book, uh, this is not a book, it's for your middle school and high school students. They will just love it. Um, in this unique look at the purpose and function of a quote, book unquote, Author Carrie Smith offers an illustrated guide that asks readers to creatively examine all the different ways this is not a book can be used. With intriguing prompts, the readers will discover that the book can be a secret message. They can tear out a page, write a note in it for a stranger, and leave it in a public place. It can be a recording device. Have everyone you contact today write their name and or a message in the book. And it can be an instrument. You can create as many sounds as you can using the book, like flipping the pages slow or fast or slapping the cover. This is not a book. will engage readers by having them define everything a book can be by asking, well, if it's not a book, what is it then? Readers will come up with a kaleidoscope of possible answers, and their creativity index will be turned up to high. So you enjoy these books. They're wonderful. And all of your students will get a tremendous amount out of them. OK. Well, now that Elva has shared the books with us, we just wanted to share with you one possible activity that really could run the gamut of all the books, and that is making bookmarks. And so one of the, the uh, activities that we place on here about making the bookmarks is that, that you'll see on, the, on this um, slide is that we talked about how you can make a bookmark using card stock. But there are several different um, bases that you can use using trying to make a bookmark. You can use paper clips. You can use popsicle sticks. Almost anything that you can think of it to hold a place. You can even use pins and decorate them. But what we've offered here on the slide is how you might use a cardstock. Gather crayons, markers, maybe even some magazine clips, multiple accessories, googly eyes, um, colorful pipe cleaners. It, um, some materials, loose material scraps, anything, ribbon, glue, 
that you think would be wonderful to attach to a um, card stock or to a popsicle stick or something of some sort in order to save pages. And then what we would ask is that you would encourage the kids to be creative and to be original. You might always want to begin by making a sample for yourself so they can see the possibilities, um, something for them to view as they're making it. Make sure you have music playing in the background as they're creating their bookmark, just something to help set up the music and the tone. But um, one of the things or several of the ideas that we have is, is, again, as I said, you can use the paper clip. And on the paper clip, you can put some hair on there, some ribbon and some googly eyes, and get some colorful paper clips, not just the silver ones. Get red or green, blue, and um, create little faces. And then, of course, mark. Use the paper clip to mark the pages, as we often do anyway. You can use a popsicle stick and make flowers out of it. That, that's shown here on the slide for those of you that can't see. You can use buttons and line them up and down the popsicle stick and then um, place a flower at the top of it. Then we have in the left bottom corner where you can actually go to Home Depot. And if you go into the painting um, home decorative section, they have those color strips. And the color strips have different colors and different shades of a partic one particular color. You can always decorate those. On this particular slide that we have, someone has chosen to get a butterfly imprint and put butterflies all over the backdrop of the color. So anything that is available, look in your home, can become a bookmark. Then in our last image on our page, we just show where someone has cut out some card stock um, in the shape of a, of a bookmark, just a small horizontal um, piece, and they place some felt material on top, forming different images, a flower, some hearts. Um, any kind of design that the child might be able to create. So the world is there. This is really a space for their minds to thrive and be as creative as possible, pulling out what's inside of them. And it's a simple activity that you can use with any of the, any of the books that will work wonderful and well. So we're excited about it. We hope you enjoy that activity. We want to we wanna actually thank all of the partners. And uh, we've got a couple of things. And we're going to actually tap Ms. Lisa Franklin in, in just a second. Um, uh, so we want to thank all of the partners, and uh, right now I'm showing a slide for those who are not uh, able to view a slide of all our partners, and I'll just go ahead and mention them. Avance, Family Gateway, Friendship West, uh, Baptist Church, Highland Hills Library, Highland Hills Apartment Complex, J.C. Turner, Project Still I Rise, St. Mark United Methodist Church, St. Paul United Methodist Church, Tico Theater Company, Truly Missionary Baptist Church, and Turner 12 are our partners doing this summer in the city for our I Love to Read Literacy Initiative. So we want to thank all of those partners for those representatives that are online. We are so excited about the work that you are doing with us. We endeavor to do that work. We endeavor to continue that work. And we also endeavor to expand that work and do greater. And in, in, in our efforts to expand that work, a part of that uh, is good documentation. We want to be able to tell the story of what you guys are doing out there in the city because we recognize the fact that you are the experts in your community and we want to be able to support the work that you are doing. So we really appreciate that. And with that being said, one of the things we will, we would love to come out and visit your site, see your program and see what's going on. Uh, Ms. Lisa Franklin is here with us and she's actually going to come out and visit and just help us tell the story of what you're doing out there uh, with this I Love to Read and how this this uh, storytelling can better equip us to be able to do projects like this greater and more projects like this. So I'm going to ask Ms. Lisa if she would come and just give us a brief synopsis of what she'll be looking at uh, as, as she helps you support and tell your story. Ms. Lisa? Yes, good morning. Good morning, community partners. Uh, as James has framed um, what I will be doing in my role and I love to read this summer, I'm coming out doing site observations. Uh, observations and various uh, criteria, such as are students engaged? Uh, is the teaching artist um, engaging the students? How is the teaching artist linked the activity to the reading um, portion of the activity? Um, student to teacher ratio, uh, atmosphere in which the students are in, and things along those lines. Uh, you know, we want to endeavor to just raise the program higher and higher. And in order for us to do so, we need to capture information in order for us to 
um, compile it, and then make I Love to Read um, even better and better with each coming year. And so I am coming, um, as I said, with an observation eye. I don't want anybody to feel as though this is something punitive. I know sometimes when people do site visits, it has a negative connotation with it. But this is not anything of a punitive nature. It's just simply capturing information, understanding the environment in which we are um, running the programs in, and um, understanding each, how each of our partner sites are unique in, in ways in which they bring information and the program to our students and the families this summer. But in order to help me do that in a sequential um, and orderly fashion, I need you to please provide me with the information of the days and times in which you will be running the I Love to Read program. I emailed each of you a letter, and um, hopefully I did not receive any um, kickback, so I'm assuming each of you have received it on Monday. And the letter clearly outlines that I need for each of you to please email me back and state the time that you'll be running the I Love to Read programs, and that way I'm able to schedule and forecast which, which um, programs I'll go to on which specific days. The deadline for that is Monday, July 1st. So please, if you have not uh, seen the email, look for it. It has come from my email address, which is intern3 at faiththought.org. And um, I did put on it site, site uh, visits, time sensitive, uh, attention required. <laughs> so please, if you can do that and respond to me by Monday, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, we really want to get that information back. Once again, this is about helping and supporting the story, and we know all of our partners are busy running their own organizations. So um, we're really asking that with the light of sense, but we, we, this would really help us to be able to document the work that you're doing. And I thank Lisa for doing uh, a wonderful job of explaining that to you. This, this is not punitive. This is just about, um, um, uh, about being able to document what you guys are doing, because we realize that uh, you guys are teaching us. You know what works in your community, and so you're helping us to learn about what happens in that community. What happens where Highland Hills is? What happens in the community where Tico is? What happens in the, in the community where St. Mark is? You guys are the experts. You live there. You, 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 you've been cultivating work there for a long time, and so we want to learn from you, and we're going to learn through Ms. Lisa Franklin, and we thank her for that. And again, her email address is intern, I-N-T-E-R-N-3, the number three, at bigthought.org. That is intern3 at bigthought.org. So if you get any um, um, correspondences from her, please, 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 please do uh, Ms. Key and myself a favor and respond to her so we can get you in uh, some type of way we know when you're actually doing your program. We want to thank you so, so much for that. Uh, I think, again, we just uh, shown a slide right quick of just different contacts. I think most of the partners know how to contact us. Uh, we have some different contacts of people that are working here in our department, Aaron Offer, Kia Westbrook, Elba Perez, and myself, which is James Adams, and also Mary Hernandez. But Kia Westbrook will be your primary contact for all our I Love to Read partners. Uh, her email address is kia.westbrook at bigthought.org. That is K-E-A dot W E S. -T. T B R O O K, Kia Westbrook, Kia dot Westbrook at bigthought.org. At this time, I, I have been chatting with a couple of partners uh, doing the webinar. So if you have any questions, for those of you that cannot chat, um, I'm going to unmute. If you'd like to unmute yourself, uh, if you have any questions, I've um, I see Ms. Walsh. I've talked to Ms. Walsh and Ms. Joshua. So if you have any questions, I don't know if Ms. Brittany or Reverend Morris, if you have any questions. We'd be more than happy to, to assist you at this time. Will this uh, PowerPoint presentation, this is Teresa Wash, will this PowerPoint presentation be available online? Or Yes. Uh, what we're going to do, we're actually recording the PowerPoint presentation. Once our IT department here uh, edits, edited, edited, and gets it back to me, I'll uh, have Kia email it to all the partners so that those of you who need to see it again or maybe those who were unable to. We would to say we can, yeah, yeah, but we can, it was just, you know, we could. You want to email it to you, Reverend Mars? 
Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so we got we'll, we'll email the presentation out to you guys that that need it. All right. Okay. I I just like to be able to share it with my staff. Great. That sounds. Uh, we do want to let you know, I'm, I'm showing the PowerPoint slide for those who can see it, but for those who know, we will have the toolkit items ready and books will be ready for pickup on Friday, June 28th, this Friday, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. here at the Big Dog office. And for those who have not visited us recently, we are no longer on at 2501 Oakland Avenue. We are at a new location and we're located at 1409 South Lamar Street in Suite 1015. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the south side of 30, we're in the south side on Lamar Building, on Lamar Street. So we have, please make note of that for those who haven't visited us in a while. Uh, we are in a location at the south side on Lamar Building on the first floor in Suite 1015. If we have any, no, no, I'm not getting any more questions. Everybody seems to be satisfied. We will email it to you. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. I want to thank Ms. Kia Westbrook for coordinating this whole effort. Thank Ms. Elvis Perez. I want to thank Ms. Lisa Franklin also. Thank you all for joining us, and you guys have a beautiful Wednesday. Thank you.